Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Strife Tech, and I'm here to ask and answer one simple question. Is it worth your time? Early Access Edition. On trial today, no rest for the wicked. Currently in Early Access, this is being made by Moon Studios, the same company that did both of the Ori games. This is a top-down 3D action RPG. It's sort of a mix of V Rising, Dark Souls, and The Witcher. Now, as is the nature of Early Access, many of the things I cover today may not be the same upon release. Heck, many of the things have already changed since I started playing. Moon Studios have pumped out five large patches in under two weeks. Now, while this is a good sign, we do need to realize it is an Early Access game and it may never come out. That being said, Moon Studios does have two very successful games under their belt, one of which was actually an Early Access baby. So while they do know what they're doing, stranger things have happened. One last thing I want to put out there, I lost my footage for this game twice and this has royally messed up the continuity of what I'm saying to what's being shown. Typically when I'm playing a game and I'm recording, I'm jotting down notes of what I want to talk about and then I can grab that footage because it matches what I wanted to talk about. Well, I have all of the notes but none of the footage. I'll try my best to match up the notes with the new footage but if it doesn't seem to flow, that's why. You are a serum, a member of a group of mystical holy warriors imbued with remarkable powers and sworn to defeat the pestilence at any cost. The island of Sakura had reportedly been infected and you were sent to save it. Now, while you're doing this, there's a political story going on too. King Harold has died and his son Magnus has been crowned ruler. He sends Madrigal Selene, an ambitious, ruthless figurehead of the church, to rid the pestilence herself. And you, of course, get caught in the crossfire. Now, this being early access, we only get the first chapter. We don't really know how this is going to shake out and what's going to happen going forward. But what we've gotten so far is really good and one of the main reasons I kept moving forward. I wanted to know what happened next. I wanted to know what the serum were, where this pestilence came from. But what captivated me most was how the story was told. You're often put into these cinematic cutscenes that are absolutely beautiful, but it's the voice work that really sells it. But we'll talk more about those in the graphics and the sound sections. Okay, gameplay. There is a lot to cover here, so hold on tight. I'll try to break it into sections so you can jump around and hear what you want. The best way I can describe the combat is to say that it's Souls-like. And if you know what that means, you're most of the way there. You have the basic stamina-based combat with dodges, difficult parries, and blocking. Dodge speed will change based on how much stuff you have equipped, and you're probably going to be dying a lot. So, basically Souls-like. The little extra part is your weapon abilities. As you fight, you get focus, and this allows you to perform the weapon abilities, be it a fireball from a staff, a spoon from a sword, so on and so forth. Now, this all sounds great, but the execution misses the mark. Some fights are gonna feel like a perfectly choreographed dance. He swings, you parry, you dodge, you attack, you get hit, you back up, you heal, everything going as planned. You're still gonna die as you learn the fight and how much damage goes out, but it doesn't feel unfair. And that's the key point, it needs to feel fair. Most of what you experience is not going to feel this way. And before you come at me with one of those get good, it's Dark Souls, Dark Souls was still fair. Difficult, but fair. Many enemies you encounter have these interesting swing timers. They wind up, they hold their swing for just longer than you think, and then it comes at you far faster than you expect it. And once you get hit, you're stunned, get hit by the next one, and just die. So the game quickly goes from you having the skill to parry and dodge correctly, to memorizing enemy swing timers and what attacks they do at what times. Which is okay for bosses, I guess. But for some of the run-of-the-mill enemies, it's just tedious and not fun. Oh, and then when two enemies come out, at you, everything falls apart. One will be throwing these homing grenades you have to dodge while trying to dodge out of the way the attacks, but once you get hit by one, you are stunned, the grenade hits you, and you're dead. Now, I'm not advocating the game be made easier, just a little more fair. Open up that parry window just a little bit, let us roll away after we get hit rather than being stunned, and my goodness, just normalize some of these swing timers. The game likes to think it's a platformer, but it doesn't give you a jump button. To jump, you just simply hold the run button, get to the edge, and you yeet yourself off into the distance. But now, that jump button is also the climb button, is also the dodge button, and is also the run button. The number of times I wanted to climb up something, but ended up rolling off a cliff, is way too high. Luckily, one of the first things they fixed is the amount of fall damage you take. It was basically death if you fell. But it still feels weird, the amount of platforming they've put into this, but not let you choose when you want to jump. Hopefully, when they add the patch to rebind keys, they let you separate those jump, run, and climb buttons. And while that would mostly help, it's not going to fix the falling off during combat. When you get to the city of Sanctuary, you're given a place to stay and you meet with a master city builder. You are now given the option of what you want to upgrade. 
be it a shortcut to get around easier or vendor stalls to sell better items, but at the cost of your time and your inventory space. You gotta go out, find a tree, get an ax, hack it down and get one piece of wood. Then you grab a pickaxe and you go find an ore node and you go hit it for 10 seconds for one piece of ore. And the upgrades of course take about 5 to 10 each. But you have such a limited inventory space it's infuriating. The first upgrades I picked were inventory space and that was over like a ring slot or an extra weapon slot. I wanted inventory space just to hold all of this crap. Now at the time of writing they have increased the amount of materials you get and they have decreased the time it takes to mine those materials. And that was the worst part. I really did enjoy the management of the city, picking what I wanted to upgrade, upgrading specific shortcuts just to make my life easier, and then of course organizing my own house and everything. My bet is the inventory situation will be relieved as things continue to move forward. This game is very good looking and a little hardware intensive, and by a little I do mean a lot. But that's just early access. They've already released patches to optimize and relieve the strain on your PC. What I really like is that they've leaned into this darker, grungier look. Not only does it help sell the story, it sets the stage. It really makes these cinematics look good. And then that paired with these facial expressions and the voices you get behind them. Yeah, I'd sit through a whole movie of this. Let it burn! Show these mainlanders that Sakura is our island! Now the soundtrack is good, but what has really stolen the show is that voice acting I keep talking about. And farmers, and sends them to the slaughter. I wonder, by the time we've reached Sacrament's gates, will anyone be left inside? Every character is voiced and they all sound incredible. Often with this many NPCs, you start hearing the same voices over and over again, but that's not the case here. The Madrigal requests your presence. You must make your way through the Nameless Pass and seek her audience. At the Heretic's Gate. At the Pagan Door. This is the way. All of them are masterfully voiced, be the main, secondary, or even just some random person in the street. It was always a delight finding a new character and just talking to them. So, is it worth your time? No. Will it be worth your time? Definitely. Don't tar and feather me yet, let me explain. This game is going to be really good when it releases, but right now it's basically a paid beta. You have to pay to play an unfinished game and help them tune it up to be ready for their 1.0 release. I'm not saying that's a bad thing to do. I spent 300 hours in Valheim and it's still not released, but Valheim and this are two very different game types. If you push, you could finish the storyline in probably about five hours. After that, you're just grinding and experimenting and maybe testing the changes they push out. And if you want to be part of the changes and the testing and all of that, then absolutely, this is totally for you. You're going to have a ton of fun. But I think for everyone else, you should probably wait. That being said, it's also on sale right now, and it's going to be cheaper now than in their 1.0 release. So I'd almost say buy it, play it for a couple of hours to get a feel for it, and then forget about it until 1.0 comes out. Then you'll have the full story to go explore. You'll have all the cinematics. You'll have the voice acting. Oh, everything will be so, so good. But again, it's a risk. We don't know if it will come out. We don't know how the story will shape up. It might flop worse than Cyberpunk. Who knows? But for now, add it to your wish list. Maybe buy it and just wait for the 1.0 release. And I'll review it then and we'll see if it turns out to be as good as I thought. My name's been Strife Tech and thank you for watching. If you made it this far, this video was certainly worth your time. So maybe it's worth a like and a subscribe. That is the best way to get notified when I drop new content. And there is a lot of content coming. So I'll see you next time on Is It Worth Your Time?